cada uno de nosotros. That prepares a special blessing for all of us. Levanta tu mano, comienza a orar por tu propia petición, por tu demanda personal. Please st start to pray for your own petition, your own demand. Abre tu boca, comienza a orar, comienza a orar. Open your mouth and start to pray with passion. Delante de Dios determina lo que Dios te puede dar. Your passion before God determines what He's able to give you. Dios no te va a dar más de lo que tu corazón esté apasionado por recibir. God will not give you more than what your heart is passionate for receiving. El mismo Dios que le da alimento a un millonario en el mejor hotel o restaurante de la ciudad. The same God that gives uh, a millionaire the best food and the best place to live in the best place of the city. Ese mismo Dios le da una pizza vieja a un, a un, a un homeless. It's the same God that gives an old pizza piece to a homeless. Porque depende del propósito del corazón del hombre y de cómo clama y busque, Dios le dará because it depends on the heart of the man and how he seeks and how he is passionate that Haz God will provide para esta Haz tu let's do a demand for our word today Toro do your demand una gloria mayor. A, pedir esa gloria mayor. a greater glory start Comienza. to ask for the greater glory Comienza a declarar que tus ojos verán una gloria mayor. Start to declare that your eyes will see a greater glory. Que tus hijos verán una gloria mayor. That your children will see a greater glory. Que seremos un motor que trae una gloria mayor. That we will be an engine that will bring gracias, a greater Padre, glory. Gracias, gracias. Ahora, Thank ahora, you, ahora, Father. Ahora. Thank Comienza you, Father. Comienza a pedirle al Señor. Comienza a pedirle de una forma clara, clara, clara. Si tú estás pensando en una carrera profesional, dame una gloria mayor sobre ello, Padre. Si estás pensando en un negocio, una gloria mayor para este negocio. Si es para tu familia, una gloria mayor sobre mi familia. Asking for a greater glory in your family. Cry out for that greater glory. No, no, está, está, usted para ir rezando. Yo estoy hablando de pelear en los aires, una gloria para tu vida. I am asking to fight on in the air for a greater glory for your Algo life. Algo que supere todas las expectativas que tengan de ti. Something that surpasses all the expectations that you may have of yourself. Dios quiere hacer algo mucho más grande que lo que la gente espera de ti. God wants to do something greater than what people expect of you. Gracias, Padre, los cielos se abren. Thank you, Father, the heavens are open. Declaro que la unción del Espíritu de Dios. We declare that the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God desciende sobre este lugar. Comes upon this place. Que esta palabra nos da herramientas. That this word gives us the tools. Para nuestros sueños personales. For our personal dreams para nuestros sueños familiares for our families para nuestros sueños de ciudad for our dreams in our country abre los cielos padre open the heavens lord for a greater en glory in the name of amen. jesus y amen, amen. Pueden tomar asiento. you can be seated estamos llegando al final de nuestra primera semana de ayuno 2018 we're coming to the end of our first week of fasting of 2018 la propuesta del Espíritu Santo ha sido ayunar por una gloria mayor. The proposal that the Holy Spirit made to us was to cry out for a greater glory. El cristianismo a veces no ha manejado bien el sentido de lo que es la gloria. In Christianity we have not uh, managed correctly the, the meaning of a glory. Frases de cajón que no se explican bien pueden frenar la proyección de Dios para tu vida. Repetitive phrases could stop the the process that God has for your life cualquiera de nosotros defendería la fe con la frase la gloria es solo de Dios any one of us could defend that phrase by saying the glory belongs only to God la gloria le pertenece solo a Dios the glory it's only for God pero eso no está en la Biblia but that's not in the Bible Dios es un Dios que recibe toda la gloria God is a God that receives all the glory pero Dios tiene en sus planes mostrar su gloria en los hombres but God in his plans he wants to show his glory on in men en Romanos 8 hablando del propósito con el hombre dice que él va a glorificar al hombre in Romans 8 he says that in his purpose with men he will glorify men el gran peligro es que el hombre quiera gloria en su propia fuerza y por sus propias capacidades the real danger is when man wants the glory by his own strength pero Dios necesita que tú ames y desees la gloria de él en tu vida but God requires that you desire and you Uh, want God's glory in your life. And there are many aspects in which you can perceive the glory of God in someone. 
And Moses, you could see it in his face. Cuando Salomón fue a hacer la casa con todo el oro que le metió la casa de Dios, dice que la gloria de Dios estaba allí. When Salomon made the, the 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 house of God, the temple, you could see the reflection of the gold, and gloria, there was the glory of God. La gloria God. también se ve en milagros como los que Jesús hizo. Eso demuestra la gloria de Dios. Glory could also be seen in the miracles, like what Jesus did. That reflects God's glory. Pero la gloria no solo tiene que ver con el estilo de esa gloria. But the glory has not only have to do with the style of the glory. Sino con el alcance que tome esa gloria. But also with how far that glory could reach out. La iglesia se ha enfocado en una gloria de culto. The church has focused in a glory that it's part of the cult only. Y es bueno que el culto tenga gloria. And it's good that the cult has glory. Pero lo que Dios está levantando para este tiempo es una gloria que sale a la gente. But what God is preparing for this time is a glory that it reaches many. Y para eso Dios necesita que la iglesia comience a orar no por la gloria de una iglesia como ente, sino la gloria en la generación de esa iglesia. But for that we need to start praying for a glory not in a church as as body, but the glory that is reflected onto others. Moisés reflejó en su rostro la gloria. Moses reflected on his face the glory of God. Pero su hijo no sirvió para nada, así que esa gloria no le sirvió para nada a Gerson. But his son was not able to do anything, meaning that the glory that he got from God was good for nothing. I'm sure the 90% of people that are here didn't know the name of Moses' son. La gloria de Salomón fue maravillosa, pero su hijo dividió el, dividió el reino, eso lo veremos hoy. Salomón's glory was great, but his son divided the kingdom. Necesitamos entender que Dios va a levantar una gloria que cae sobre nuestra generación. We need to understand that God is pouring out a glory that falls into our generation. Cuando la palabra dice que la gloria postrera de la casa de Dios será mayor que la primera. When the word says that the later glory will be greater than the first glory. Es que la gloria de Dios será puesta en el nuevo templo que eres tú. Is that the glory of God will be deposited in the new temple that is you. Y cuando tú vas a tu trabajo, la gloria de Dios debe ir contigo. And when you go to work, the glory of God must go with you. Cuando vas a tu universidad, a tu college, la gloria de Dios va contigo. When you go to college or school, the glory of God goes with you. Basta de esa gloria maravillosa de culto en un montón de gente que el lunes no parece creyente. We have enough of that glory of a Sunday cult when on Monday. Doesn't, nobody shows the glory of God. God needs a glory that is able to impact and influence a city and a country. A modo de introducción, Genesis 12, 2 y 3. As an introduction, let's go to Genesis 12, 2 to 3. You can follow the English passage on the okay. screen. Y haré de ti una iglesia grande. I'm not able to see correctly. Let's let's read it. Read it again. Haré de ti una misión grande. And I will make of you a great mission. Ahí dice. Ah, ahora sí. Y haré de ti una nación grande. And it says, I will make of you a great nation. Una nación grande. Say with me a great nation. Oiga, oiga, dígalo, una nación grande. Say with me a great nation. No dice haré contigo una empresa grande, sino haré de ti. It doesn't say I will make of you a big business. It says I will make of you a big, a great nation. Lo importante no es lo que Dios puede hacer contigo, sino lo que va a hacer contigo. What is important is not what God could do with you, is what God will do with you. Lo que va a hacer con tus generaciones y con los que vienen detrás de ti. What He will, will do with your generations and those that come before you, after you. Como Dios hará una nación grande. How could God do a great nation? Ahí lo explica. That's how He explains it. Engrandeceré tu nombre, serás bendición. Serás bendición. Diga conmigo, seré bendición. I will be a blessing. Say with me, I will bendeciré be a blessing. Bendeciré a los que te bendijeren y a los que te maldijeren, maldeciré. Diga conmigo, autoridad. Say with me, authority. Diga conmigo, autoridad. Authority. Y serán benditas en ti todas las familias de la tierra. Diga, bendición generacional. Say with me, generational blessing. Okay. Esa era la bendición que se le dio a Abraham. That was the blessing that God gave Abraham. Todos los evangélicos decimos tener la bendición de Abraham encima. All the Christian people say we have uh, Abraham's blessing unto us. Pero no podemos creer que Dios nos puede usar para bendecir una nación. 
but we cannot think that God can bless us, could give us to be a blessing for a nation. Sea que tú lo entiendas o no lo entiendas. Whether you understand it or not. La iglesia está llamada a participar en el desarrollo de la sociedad. The church is called to participate of the development of a city. La iglesia debe ser una influencia poderosa para la, para la sociedad. The church must be of a great influence for a city. Y escúchame esto, la, la responsabilidad de la iglesia esencialmente en torno a la sociedad son tres. And listen to me, the, the essential responsibility of a church in a city is those are three things la iglesia debe vigilar, regular, y transformar las sociedades. the church must vigilar, watch, watch regular, control okay, y transformar. and transform Esa es la labor de la iglesia. that is the work of a si church la se queda metida en el templo donde se reúne y no hace esto Dios se queda sin instrumento para estas, para estas funciones sociales. If the church remains enclosed in a in, in a temple, in an institution, the God will not have anyone to use to do these three functions. La iglesia se ha dedicado a crear una cultura de iglesia mientras el diablo sigue destruyendo la sociedad. The church has been busy with um, having this culture of a church while the devil continues to advance destroying our city. Escúchame, si no profundizamos en este tema que Dios nos trae hoy. If we don't dip in, in this topic that God is speaking to us about today. Nos podría pasar que con nuestra pasión espiritual alcancemos una gloria mayor. We could happen that with our spiritual passion we will reach a greater glory. Pero esa gloria mayor nos serviría solamente para dividirnos y para sentirnos los dueños del mundo. But that greater glory will only be enough to make us feel the kings of the world and divide the church. Pero si hoy la voz del Santo, But if today we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, you and I could become the, uh, the, the makers of a new society. Los gestores de una nueva ciudad y una nueva nación. The makers of a new city and a new nation. Yo he visitado ciudades en el mundo donde se dice que hay un gran avivamiento. I have visited uh, cities in the world where it's said to be a great revival. Y me da mucha alegría subirme a un o ver un autobús donde dice Jesús vive. And uh, I feel so excited to see a bus where it says Jesus is alive. Entonces le dicen a uno, no, es que es que hay un avivamiento en la ciudad, hay mucha gente evangélica. And they say, oh, this is a revival in our city. There's many people that are like Christians. Pero en esa misma ciudad la basura no cabe en las calles. But in that same city there's garbage everywhere. La gente es irrespetuosa. People are disrespectful. Entonces uno dice, ¿dónde está el avivamiento? So then you ask yourself, where is the revival? Avivamiento no es meter gallinas en un, en un galpón. Revival is not to bring chickens into a, a, a farm, a cage. Avivamiento es cambiar el mundo a través del poder de Dios. Revival is to change the world through the power of God. Nosotros hemos conocido aquí en Toronto. We have known here in Toronto. Gente con una fe maravillosa y con un cristianismo muy bello. People with great faith and a beautiful Christianity. But they're dirty. They're disrespectful. They're non-punctual. What does that mean? That the revival of their spirit does not touch their soul. Does not change their environment. Avivamiento tiene que traer cambios radicales a las ciudades y a la sociedad. Revival must bring radical changes to the cities and the countries. Nosotros creemos que avivamiento es gritería en los cultos. We think that revival is screaming in our services. Yo quiero gritería en los cultos. I want screaming in my services. Yo quiero que mi esposa grite en el culto. I want my wife to scream in our service. Pero mi principal avivamiento es que mi esposa me haga la comida con mucho amor. But my first revival is that my wife will make me food with a lot of love que mis hijos a tener orden en su casa. that my children learn to be organized in their home that I become a great priest not for Maranatha Toronto but for Ese my home de mayor. that is the revival of a greater glory 
Se supone que cuando el hombre es tocado, la sociedad debe ser tocada. We assume that when a man is touched, then the society must be touched. Debemos clamar por una iglesia que no solo llene la iglesia. We must cry out for a church Perdón, that por una gloria que no solo llene la iglesia, una gloria. We must cry out for a glory that not only fills our church with people. Necesitamos una gloria que además de manifestarse el domingo en la iglesia. We need a glory that it not only manifests. Nos ayude a cerrar prostíbulos. That will help us close um, prostitution centers. Nos ayude a cerrar discotecas. That will help us close down clubs and bars. O sea, somos o no somos. Are we or we are not? Gente cristiana metida en una discoteca. ¿Qué hace un supuesto cristiano en una discoteca? Christian people in a club. What a Christian-like person is doing si in a club. Estamos llamados a destruir eso en el nombre de Jesús. If we're called to destroy that in the name of Jesus. Necesitamos una gloria mayor. We need a greater glory. Que cierre los bingos que están cerca de nosotros. That close los down. Bingos. Oh, they close down those gamer game places that are around us. Una gloria que pelee y desmantele los lugares donde se vende droga para nuestros hijos. A glory that will close down and dismantle the places where they sell drugs for our kids. Basta de esta religión maquillada que no sirve al final para nada. Enough of this Christianity that is just makeup that in the end is worth for nothing. Necesitamos una gloria que aniquile todo poder del diablo a nuestro hijo. We need a glory that will kill any work of the enemy among us. Necesitamos que la iglesia suma una gloria que transforme la sociedad. We need that the church assumes a glory that can transform a city. Queremos una gloria que cambie esa violencia que se nota en la gente de Toronto cuando ven un carro. We want a glory that will change the violence that you can see in the Torontonians when they hit a car. Que no es otra cosa que el resultado de vidas angustiantes por buscar dinero. That is nothing else than the result of lives that are anguished because of their search for money. Es por eso que este ayuno tiene que apuntar a una visión clara de una gloria mayor. That's why this fasting has to aim for a clear vision of a greater glory. No solo una gloria mayor que traiga poder sobrenatural el cual anhelamos y queremos. Not only Only a greater glory that will bring supernatural power. Sino una gloria mayor que además traiga una influencia mayor sobre nosotros. But also a greater glory that will bring a greater influence among our nation. Pastor, usted cómo piensa influenciar esta ciudad con un grupo de 200 personas que somos? Pastor, how are you thinking to influence a city with a group of 200 people Yo that we are? Lo que tengo al lado, Dios se la gente que más lejos. I will get busy with trying to influence those around me. God will do the rest. Pero por no creer y aceptar nuestra responsabilidad, estamos dejando que el diablo siga destruyendo todo. But for not believing and assuming our responsibility, we're allowing the devil to destroy everything. Somos un ente multiplicador de la gloria de Dios. We are a body that multiplies the glory of God. Mi hija está en una escuela estudiando allá tiene que multiplicar la gloria que Dios le está dando. My daughter is in a school uh, studying and there she must multiply the glory of God. Donde tú trabajas no solo tienes que ir a sacar dinero, tienes que multiplicar la gloria de Dios. Where you work, you're not only going to extract money, you're going to go to multiply the glory of God. Es por eso que necesitamos entender nuestra visión y responsabilidad de una gloria mayor para Toronto y así afectar este país. That's why we need to understand and assume a greater glory so we can affect Toronto and a country. Hay un principio elemental que quiero compartirles. There's a basic principle that I want to share with you. Escúchame esto. Listen to this. No podemos amar a Dios. We cannot love God. Y no amar la tierra que Dios nos da. And not love the land that God gives us. Y lo que es peor. And what's worse. No podemos amar a Dios. We cannot love God. E ignorar la gente que Dios desea salvar en la tierra que Dios nos da. And ignore the people that God wants to save in the land that he has given us. Tenemos que cambiar de actitud. We have to change our attitude. Nosotros tenemos que vernos como lo que somos delante de Dios. We have to see us how we are before God. Nosotros hemos sido puestos en este lugar y debemos amar esta tierra. We have been placed in this country and we must love this land. El común de los emigrantes ve esta tierra como una prostituta a la cual usa para después tirar. The majority of the immigrants see Canada as a prostitute who you use so after you can throw it out. Algunos están esperando a ver cómo le sacan en cinco años una riqueza para irse a su país. Some are waiting to see how in five years they could extract as much riches so in five years they can go back to their countries. Primero te decimos bienvenido a la fiesta. 
First, we want to tell you welcome to the party. Many have tried it and have failed. Some have left uh, trying to look for money everywhere, going back to their countries. And five years later, you see them again asking money from welfare. Despierte. Wake up. God didn't bring you here so he can give you five million dollars. God brought you here to ordain your life and your generations. If God wanted to give you five million dollars, he would have given it to you in your place of origin. If he brought you out, it's because he needs to generate in you the potential that is required that he couldn't do there. We must love this city. Amar su gente. We must love his pe Hasta their people. Gente para nosotros, Even the people that are difficult to love, we must love. Now the first question I want to ask you today is how much do you pray for Toronto? I was born in Colombia. If anyone asks me how much do I pray Así for Colombia? Nada. I would say almost nothing. Because for me it's more important my land that I conquer than my life, my land of origin. Uh, I see the news in Colombia and I just feel like disgusted. Of see all of the, the dirt and corruption that goes on. Listen to this. We are a new creature. We give more call to the, the born again of the flesh than the born again of the spirit. I was born here and there and stop remembering so much an old creature that God is, wants to exterminate it why don't you focus instead on, on the person and the new creature that God is lifting up now stop being so proudful about your origin and start working in your, root, in your roots so you can be the instrument that God requires Paul says to Timothy to his pastor oh, in 1 Timothy 1 Timothy 2 from 1 to 5 you can follow the English version on the screen Pablo al pastor uno de sus pastores que ha levantado exhorto ante todo a que se hagan rogativas oraciones, peticiones acciones de gracia por todos los hombres por los reyes y por todos los que están en eminencia para que vivamos quieta y reposadamente en toda piedad y honestidad porque esto es bueno, agradable delante de Dios nuestro Salvador, el cual quiere que todos los hombres sean salvos y vengan al conocimiento de la verdad. Porque hay un solo mediador entre Dios y los hombres, Jesucristo. Generalmente nos hemos enfocado en el último versículo. Generally we focus on the last verse. Hay un solo mediador entre Dios y los hombres. There is only one mediator between men and God. Le aplicamos esto al católico y le decimos, si ven María no lo puede salvar. And we apply this to the Catholic people and we say, Maria cannot save no you. Mary cannot Maria, save you. Pedro, Pablo. They are not talking about Peter or Paul. What it means here is that in your city, there is only one capable to save your city and that's Jesus and your responsibility is to pray to him so he can save them. La gente que se pierde día a día en esta ciudad no tiene sino una opción, se llama Jesús y él está en tu corazón. The people that lose their lives day to day only have one option and it's Jesus and he lives in your heart. The, deep, the people that are lost don't know what to do with their lives but you have the possibility to pray and ask God. For as long as you continue to pray more for the place where you were born than the place that you want to conquer. I will tell you in my own English. You're dead. 
good, very good. Dígale al que está a su lado, fritus mortis calavera tus estatus. Tell the person beside you, you're dead. Dígale, muerto. You're dead. Lo primero que tenemos que hacer es orar. ¿Cuántos están dispuestos a orar por esta ciudad? The first thing we need to do is to pray. How many of you are willing to pray for the city? Lo segundo que quiero compartir es cómo debemos nosotros. The second thing I want to share is how we should promover el estilo de la vida abundante que Jesús nos prometió. Promote the abundant life that God has promised us. Esto en términos religiosos evangélicos tiene un nombre que no se lo quiero dar para cambiarle el switch. This in a in a evangelical terminology has a name but I'm not going to give it to you because I don't want to change your thinking. Se lo digo al estilo que el espíritu me lo dio y después le digo la palabra con lo que los evangélicos encasillamos todo este. I'm going to tell you what it means and after I'll tell you the word that we use reli religiously. Debemos promover el estilo de vida abundante que Jesús nos prometió. We must promote the abundant style of life that Jesus promised us. This we call it give testimony in a, in a Christian terminology. But sometimes what happens is that the give testimony is only to put on a costume making yourself look some, someone you are not. Este asunto del testimonio ha dañado mucho a la iglesia. And this thing about testimony has damaged the church greatly. Because first we use it as a way of exhibit your greatness. Yo era una escoria del mundo. I was the wars of the world. Y Dios me cambió. And God changed me. Ahora soy el mejor padre. I am now the best father. El mejor the best husband and the wife is looking at him saying oh, if you only knew but the worst is not that the worst is that it's generating this 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 discomfort in the life of others wanting to tell even a greater testimony every time the brother Antonio told us that he killed, he killed 15 people without Christ my brother I killed 35 and the church screams amen it means that they give glory to God for an assassin when the Bible says that there are things that must not even be pronounced among us because the old things have passed stop talking so much about your past because there are people that are so literal in their inside that the only way to make themselves feel better is uh, telling about the worst thing of what they used to be Cambiemos el concepto de testimonio cristiano. Let's change the concept of a Christian testimony. Y más bien concienticémonos en la responsabilidad que tenemos. And let's better be conscious of the responsibility we have. Demostrarle al mundo un estilo de vida que se parezca al que Jesús vino a predicar. To demonstrate the, to the world a style of life which was what Jesus came to teach us. Pastor, ¿cuándo me va a dejar pasar adelante a dar mi testimonio? Pastor, when can I come in the front to give my testimony? Continue on and give testimony wherever you go. Testimony is not told. Testimony is expressed with the life you live. Pastor, I want to give my testimony, but I don't know how to talk. The testimony must not be talked, it must be shown. Nos volvemos políticos de la religión hablando maravillas que no vivimos. We become politicians of religion speaking things that we don't even live in our homes. Mira lo que Pablo dice. Look, look at what Paul Segunda says. 2 Corintios 3, 2 al 6. 2 Corinthians 3, 2 to 6. Nuestras cartas, dice Pablo, sois vosotros. Escritas en nuestros corazones. Conocidas y leídas por todos los hombres. Siendo manifiesto que sois carta de Cristo Expedida por nosotros Escrita no con tinta Sino con el Espíritu del Dios vivo No en tablas de piedra Sino en tablas de carne del corazón Y tal confianza tenemos mediante Cristo para con Dios 
No que seamos competentes por nosotros mismos para pensar algo de nosotros mismos. Sino que nuestra competencia proviene de Dios. El cual asimismo sí nos hizo ministros competentes de un nuevo pacto. No de la letra, sino del Espíritu. Porque la letra mata y el Espíritu vivifica. Voy a explicarte este pasaje. I'm going to explain this passage to you. Cada hombre que se expone a la palabra se convierte en una carta. Every man that is exposed to the word it becomes a letter. Una carta que va por el mundo contando lo que Dios hace en él. A letter that goes to the world telling what God has done in our lives. Esa carta lo tremendo es que es una carta de Cristo para el mundo. The, the, the important thing about this is that this letter is a letter written by Christ to the world. Pablo dice que la gente no era carta de Pablo, sino de Cristo. Paul says that people are not a letter from Paul it was a letter from God. Pero esa carta de Cristo para el mundo la había escrito Pablo. But that letter from Christ to the world was written by Paul. Cuando tú vienes aquí y te sientas. When you come here and you sit down in this tú chair. Tú estás exponiendo a que yo escriba una carta en nombre de Jesús para la You are exposing that I write a letter in behalf of Jesus or Ahora, from Jesus to the world. Pablo dice que esa carta puede tener dos bases diferentes. Paul says that that letter can have two uh, beginnings or two bases. Puede ser escrita con letra. Could be written by hand. Eso habla de, re, de, de leyes, de normas y de teología. That speaks of laws and theology. Pero hay otra forma, dice Pablo. But there is another way, says Paul. Como él escribió la carta de los Corintios a ellos como personas. As he wrote the letter of Corinthians to them as people. Él dice que les escribió fue con el Espíritu. He said he wrote with the Spirit. La única forma de tú transmitir la carta de Cristo en tu vida. The only way that you have to transmit the letter of Christ in your life. Es recibir el Espíritu del hombre que te está escribiendo el mensaje de Dios. Is receiving the spirit of the man who's writing the message from God in your life. No es la letra que te enseña la iglesia, sino el espíritu que te transmite el hombre de Dios. It's not the letter that the church teaches you, the spirit that is transmitted by the man of God. No entendimos esto los evangélicos por años. We didn't, we did, well, the Christian people didn't understand this for many years. Por eso salimos a presentar una carta escrita con letras. That's why we went out to present a letter that was written by hand with letters. Perdimos tiempo en enseñándole a gente cómo saludarse. We lost time teaching people how to say hi to each Hace other. Años, cuando yo era un niño se saludaba fácil. Dios le bendiga. Years ago I used to say God bless you. Otra llegó otro más espiritual a escribir otra otra carta. Somebody more spiritual than me came and wrote another letter. Ya nos dice, no, no, es Dios te bendiga, Dios te bendijo. You should not say God bless you, you should say God has blessed you. Usted se encontraba con un cristiano, usted le decía, Dios te bendiga. When you used to meet a Christian person, you would say, "God bless you." They would no tell you, bendiga, este bendijo. <laughs> "You're wrong." You should say, "He has blessed me already." What is that good for? En la vida práctica. In the practical life. Apareció otro más inteligente. One more, even more intelligent. Con otra letra más bonita. He wrote with even a better, like handwriting. Ella dijo, "No es Dios te bendiga." It's not God bless you. Tampoco Dios te bendijo. It's not God has blessed you. Es Dios te bendice porque es un presente continuo que es el tiempo de Dios para el hombre. God is blessing you because it's a, a continuous uh, movement that God does in your does bueno, in your life. Le toca uno dice para un seminario a que le enseñen a saludar. You need to go and be part of a seminar so you learn how to say hi. Y mientras tanto a esa generación que aprendió a saludar los hijos se les fueron al mundo. And in the meantime, that generation that learned how to say hi in Christian uh, language, their children went to the world. And we went out on the streets of our Latin America because I was part of the generation to speak of that uh, handwritten letter. La virgen está muerta y no te puede salvar. The virgin is dead and she can't save you. Quiebra los santos que son demonios. Break those uh, Statues you have at home because they're demons. Tell the person beside you that's just handwriting letters. 
vida escrita por el Espíritu. What God wants is that life written by the Spirit comes out of you. Que tú veas al católico devoto a la Virgen. That you see a Catholic person that loves the Virgin Mary. Y lo ames y puedas descubrir en él más espiritualidad que la que tú tuviste antes de conocer a Jesús. That you love her or you love them and you're able to find in them more spirituality than the one you pues had sabe, when you started. Yo le digo al Señor, mándame la gente adecuada. I tell the Lord, Lord, I need the right people for my ministry. ¿Sabe qué haría yo con diez viejitas camanduleras católicas aquí para enseñarles a orar? You know what I would do with ten of those old ladies that pray all the time? What would I do with them teaching us to pray? Siénteme diez ancianas católicas con la camandula allá al frente. Sit me, sit in front of me, ten of those old ladies with one of those um, rosaries. Y deme tiempo, yo le cambio la camándula por mi oración. And give me time that I will change the rosaries with my prayer. Eso sí, no se metan los evangélicos que me las dañan. But please, none of those Christian people come and intervene because they will kill them. Si la dejo en manos de los evangélicos, me la vuelven profeta de iglesia. If I leave them in the hands of those evangelicals, they will be, make them turn into prophets no of the church. Déjeme, yo las voy quitando la camándula y les pongo el espíritu. Let, let me work in them and take off take away the rosary and give them my spirit and with those 10 ladies I will do more than with a, a church of 200 people let's give an applause to the Lord tell the person beside you you are a letter Ask them with this ironic feeling, which ink did they use? Okay. Otro principio que quiero darles hoy. Another principle I want to give you today. Escucha, debemos ver la tierra que pisa la planta de nuestros pies como nuestra tierra de conquista. We must see the land that our feet are stepping on as our land of conquer. Con Tú tienes, conc sí, como, como tu tierra de conquista. Our As your la the land of conquest. Okay. Tú necesitas cambiar el switch en tu cabeza. You need to change your switch in your mind. Y esto ya te lo he dicho por el Espíritu en muchas ocasiones y te lo va a repetir siempre. And I have said this in the Spirit many times and I will repeat myself as many times as needed. Quítate ese rayón del disco duro. Tú no eres un emigrante. Take that, that scratch from your brain. You're not an immigrant. Tú eres un conquistador. You are a conqueror. La emigración fue el mecanismo de Dios para sacarte de tu comodidad the y de tu de tu raíz. Immigration was the mechanism that God used to take you out of your mediocrity and your commodity. Tú no viniste aquí para comer you y hacer come, dinero. You didn't come here to eat and make money. Tú viniste aquí a hacerle un daño al diablo poderoso. You came here to damage the devil in a powerful way. Y escúchame lo que te estoy diciendo proféticamente. And listen to me because this is prophetically speaking. Todos los que vinieron jóvenes aquí vinieron a parir hijos que van a cambiar esta ciudad y esta nación. All those that came young here came to have kids to change the city. Dios necesitaba sacarte de allá porque de lo contrario tus hijos iban a estar contaminados por ti por tu cultura. God needed to take you out of where you were otherwise your children would have been contaminated by your culture. Esta semana uno de nuestros hijos predicaba aquí sobre José, no recuerdo cuál fue. One of our children here was preaching about Josh, Joshua. Okay. Joseph, sorry. José lo vendieron y lo mandaron a Egipto. Joseph was sold and he was sent to Egypt. José era un muchacho mimado de su papá de Jacob. Joseph was one of those spoiled kids. Y entonces los hermanos con envidia lo vendieron. And his brothers full of envy sold him. Sería la peor desgracia para una persona que lo vendan sus hermanos y lo manden como esclavo a otro lugar. It would have been the worst disgrace for someone to be sold by their own family. ¿Por qué Dios permitió que José fuera vendido por sus hermanos? Why did God allow Joseph to be sold by his brothers? Su padre Jacob ya era parte de una visión de una tierra prometida. His father Jacob was part of a vision of a promised land. Pero Jacob cuidaba demasiado a ese muchacho. But Jacob was too protective of that little boy. Un muchacho malcriado y engreído. And he was spoiled and full of pride. Y Dios dijo, el peor enemigo para José es su papá. And God says the worst enemy for Joseph is his father. Si no lo quito de ahí, Jacob se me tira este muchacho. If I don't send him away somewhere, Jacob is going to just damage him completely. Y el 
muchachos lo llevan de su casa a perder su vida por allá como un esclavo. And Joseph was taken away from his home and he was lost as a slave. Jacob sufrió, perdí mi hijo. Jacob suffered. He said, I lost my son. While God was looking at him from heaven saying, you lost him? No, I saved him from Porque you. Because in Egypt he became a man of God full of compassion and with the capacity of being of influence. Dios te sacó de tu lugar de origen. God took you out of your place of origin. Porque muchas veces la gente que más te ama es el inconveniente más grande que Dios tiene para ti. Because for many times the people that love you are the worst inconvenience that you can have in your way uh, in your Christian life. Tú que saliste de tu país, lo que Dios te está diciendo es necesito esto arreglar a solas contigo. If you came out of your country it's because God is telling you I need to fix this with you alone. Solo así serás verdaderamente útil. Only this way you could be really useful for God. Todos conocemos el texto de Dios sobre Josué que le dice todo lo que pisare la planta de tus pies es tuyo. We all know the verse in, uh, to Joseph where God says him says to him everything that you step on will be yours. El folclorismo de los evangélicos hace unas cosas rarísimas. A mí hubo gente que me puso el pie en el carro mío, pastor, lo pisé. This is so funny for Christian people because sometimes they step on one time someone stepped on my car and said this is mine pastor I stepped on it. Continue with that religion and don't work hard and I don't know what cars you're going to have. Una alumna de mi instituto bíblico que alguna vez me dijo pastor le quiere piso esa 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 ese brazalete esto yo tengo años pero esto le piso el brazalete I had a student in, in the institute the biblical institute and she said oh I'm going to step on your bracelet y le dije yo no dejo que mendigos toquen lo mío and I said to her I don't let beggars touch what's mine que creamos un montón de mendigos usando bíblico para ver cómo pasar bíblico para ver cómo te sacaban las cosas because we create a bunch of uh, beggars to, that use the bible to see to just sound different sound right todo lo que pise la planta de tus pies es tuyo significa que el lugar donde estás parado es la tierra de tu bendición. Everything that you step on means that the place where you're stepping on is the, the land of blessing for you. Tu bendición viene cuando tu pie se posa sobre un lugar. Ahí your, está la bendición de Dios. Tú eres la bendición de Dios. Your blessing comes when you step on a place. That's God's blessing to you. Josué tenía que pasar el Jordán hacia el otro, hacia la tierra prometida. Joshua had to cross the Jordan going to the promised land. Y en el capítulo 3, versículos 12 y 13, escuche lo que dice la palabra. And in chapter 3, verses 11 to 13, read what the word says. Tomad pues ahora doce hombres de las tribus de Israel, uno de cada tribu. Escuche. Y cuando las plantas de los pies de los sacerdotes que llevan el arca de Jehová, Señor de la tierra, se asienten en las aguas del Jordán, las aguas del Jordán se dividirán. Porque las aguas que vienen de arriba se detendrán en el mar. Escuche. Había que entrar a la tierra prometida. They needed to enter the promised land. El Jordán estaba al frente. The Jordan was before them. Dios le dice algo muy diferente a Moisés. And God told something very different to Moses. A Moisés le dijo, habla que el mar se abrirá. To Moses God said, just talk to the sea and the sea will wide open. La diferencia es que con Moisés no había sacerdocio, solo un libertador. With Moses there was not a priesthood, there was only a liberator. Pero ya en el tiempo de Josué había sacerdocio constituido. But in the time of uh, Joshua there was a priesthood constituted by God. Le dice, vamos a atravesar el Jordán. So God tells him, we're going to cross the Jordan River. And Joshua said, how are we going to do it, Lord? Simple. Tell your priests to take the ark on them. El arca era la presencia misma de Dios. The ark uh, represented the presence of God. Y le dice, cuando los sacerdotes toquen con la planta de sus pies el agua del mundo, And, Las aguas de arriba se van a detener. And he said when the feet of the priest touch the waters of the river, the, the water flow will stop. Y van a pasar. And they're going to be able to cross. La planta de tus pies tiene una unción poderosa de parte de Dios. Your, the, the, your feet have a very powerful um, anointing from God. Siempre que esa planta de los pies cargue encima el arca de Dios. For as long as your feet are carrying the presence of God, which is the ark. 
con todo tu corazón el lugar donde vas lleva la bendición de Dios para ti. When you seek God with all your heart wherever you go God's la blessing is with you. Y escúchame, eso te va a abrir las puertas que sean los mares que sean los ríos que sean. And listen to me, that's going to open the, the, the roads that are needed, the waters that are required, and anything that you need. That's why I invite you to pray with me every morning at 6.30 so you can go wherever you go with the ark of God. You need to change the image you have of yourself. You are a conqueror. Un conquistador que tal vez como Moisés, a conqueror that perhaps like Moses está trabajando, cuidándole ovejas al suelo, was working uh, taking care of the sheep of his father-in-law but his destiny was to conquer a city a nation and the moment that God talks to your life he's going to take you off out of your lifestyle y te va a llevar a ser el conquistador de mucha gente And he's going to take you to be the conqueror of many people. Tú tienes que librarte de ese estigma que tienes encima. Soy un emigrante. You have to free yourself from that prejudgment of I'm just an immigrant. Eso te hace pensar que estás como recogido en una tierra que no es tuya. That makes you feel like you're being abandoned and you're being left in a place uh, that is not yours. Pastor, yo soy un exilado. Pastor, I'm an, an exile. Mentiras. Lies. El diablo usó el exilio para convertirte en un conquistador. Despierta espiritualmente. The devil did not use the exile to make you become a conqueror. It's time for wake up. Tú has venido aquí a este país a cumplir una misión de parte del cielo y la vas a hacer con el poder de Dios. You have come here to fulfill a mission from heaven and you're going to do it in the name of Jesus. Y el punto álgido de esta enseñanza de hoy and the high point of this teaching today is that we are praying for a greater glory for this city and this nation for us to be able to have a greater glory sobre esta ciudad y esta nación. over this nation, over this country Debemos aprender a diferenciar dos palabras. we need to learn to differentiate between two words estas dos palabras. say these two words Herencia. Inheritance, Herencia. inheritance, Heredero. and here. Dos palabras two, parecidas, pero que no son lo mismo. two words that are similar but are not the same. Generalmente todos vemos la ciudad de Toronto y Canadá. Generally we all see the city of Toronto and Canada. Como el lugar donde tenemos la provisión para nuestros hijos. As the place where we find the provision for our children. Y como salimos como emigrantes. And because we left as immigrants. Nos concentramos en construir una herencia para nuestros hijos. We concentrate in building this inheritance we will leave to our children. Para el emigrante es mucho más complicado. For immigrants, is even more complicated. Si emigró a Norteamérica. If they immigrated to North America. Porque nos salieron con un cuento que es el sueño americano. Because they told us about the American dream. Y el sueño americano es tener más plata que lo que tiene la gente en América Latina. And the American dream is to have more money here than what you used to have when you were back home. Buscar una vida parecida a lo que Hollywood nos mostró. To look for a similar life of what you were able to see in Hollywood. Por eso el emigrante de este país viene pensando en conseguir una herencia. That's why the immigrants come to this country thinking on 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 building an inheritance money money plata plata mon, Dale, money plata es lo que money is what i need y para eso and for that plata. i immigrated Or, hasta que no entendamos until we don't understand que en este país al que tú llegaste como un emigrante then in this country the one you arrived being an immigrant fuiste enviado por dios como un conquistador you were sent by god as a conqueror no entenderás lo que es la gloria mayor you will not understand what's a greater glory porque con tu mentalidad de emigrante crees que la gloria mayor es una casa más grande because with your mentality of an immigrant you think that a greater glory is a bigger house una gloria mayor es un carro del año a greater glory is a, 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 a um, car of um, the year una gloria mayor es poder viajar al Caribe como rico a greater glory is to be able to to travel to the Caribbean once a year as a rich person y lo que es más ridículo and what's even more ridiculous please give me the down payment ahead of time so I, I'm, I feel free to say this trabajar 11 meses como un burro para ir a llevar cosas del dólar a tu país y dártelas de rico 
work hard 11 months so one month you can go back to your country bringing dollar store items for everyone el problema no está en el dollar store el problema está en tu corazón the problem is not that you're buying at the dollar store the problem is in your heart parece que quedaste como como obligado a demostrarles que tú eres el nuevo magnate de Norteamérica it seems like you're obliged to demonstrate everyone that you're the new millionaire of North or te, te South America el pelo teñido y gafas oscuras en tu pueblo <laughs> Te ven llegar con las gafas oscuras y el pelo teñido en tu pueblo. They see you uh, getting out of the plane with your tinted hair and your dark glasses. Y ya no dices hola, sino que dices hi. And you don't say hola, you say hi. Y aprende esa sonrisa así como de, como de Hollywood. Ay. Estoy triunfando, estoy triunfando en Norteamérica. And you learn to smile like in Hollywood. I am triumphant. I am doing sabe well. Lo que vives aquí para completar esa renta. Only God knows what you have to go through to pay for that rent. Solo Dios sabe lo del dolorcito en la espalda. Only God knows the, the, the back pain you feel. Es por eso que debes verte como un conquistador. That's why you need to see yourself as a conqueror. La gloria tuya no está en lo que muestres a los hombres, sino en lo que hagas con Dios. Esa es tu gloria. You, your glory is not what you can show to man, it's what you do with God. Escúchame, la gloria mayor para ti. Listen to me, the greater glory for you Tiene que estar enfocada. has to be focused. No en conseguir una herencia. Not in uh, building an inheritance, sino en preparar un heredero. But in preparing a here. En que tú puedas levantar a alguien que continúe tu obra. In that you are able to lift someone up and train someone to continue your work. Todos queremos darle a nuestros hijos herencia. We all want to give our children an inheritance. Pero qué triste entender que después de tener la herencia, nuestro heredero no tiene el carácter para manejarlo y superarlo. But how sad is to understand that when you have the inheritance ready, our hearers are not able to manage what you're giving him. Quitemos el foco de la herencia. Let's take our focus away from the inheritance. Enfoquémonos en los herederos. And let's focus on the hearers. Enfoquémonos en una nueva generación. Let's focus on the new generation. Enfocarnos en los herederos es tener un legado que otros puedan continuar a la grandeza. To focus on our generation is to have a legacy that will be able to influence pass our time aquí dando Voy a dar solo I could stay all afternoon long giving you examples I'm only going to give you four el primero, el de Adán. the first example is Adam. Todos lo que le pasó a Adam we all know what happened to Adam Adam, la del cielo desde el Adam received the inheritance from heaven from the beginning Todo el con la para y vivir de ello. all the garden with the authority to administer and live from it Pecó. He sinned. Lo sacaron del huerto. He was kicked out of the garden. Adam perdió la herencia por el pecado. Adam lost his inheritance because of his sin. Pero lo que venía para Adam era peor todavía. But what was coming to Adam after that was worse. Según muestra la Biblia, Adam le enseñó a sus hijos al uno a cultivar y al otro a trabajar con animales. According to what the Bible says, Adam taught his children some to um, hunt animals and the other ones to work on the land. Él se ocupó de enseñarle a sus hijos cómo conseguir la herencia que él había perdido en el huerto. He got uh, worried about teaching their children how to find the inheritance that he lost in the garden. Y mientras se ocupó de enseñarles a hacer dinero, and what, while he was teaching them how to make money, un hijo mató al otro. One of his children killed the other. Y se quedó sin herencia y sin heredero. And he was left without an inheritance and without here. Dios metió la mano. Because, and then God put his Dice hands in it e the Bible says that they have more children but the new firstborn was, his name Pero was Dios Seth, dice, Seth será para mí. and God said Seth will es be decir, mine palabra, más palabra, menos. it's to say just in a few words Adam and Eve if you want to continue destroying your family it's okay but leave one for me el, 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 la orden de Dios de tener un primogénito the order that God gave them to have a firstborn era para Dios asegurarse levantar un heredero it was for God to make sure he had that here en ese orden viene Noé and then in that order Noah came el heredero de Dios que era Seth se mezcló con los Cainitas the here, God's here which was Seth mixed with the Canaanites Dios decide destruir el mundo a través del diluvio and God decides to destroy the world with the uh, flood es decir voy a acabar con toda la herencia terrenal 
I'm going to finish all that earthly inheritance. Pero Dios separa a Noé. But God separates Un Noah. Para Dios. He, he separated and here for Dios. him. Va a destruir la tierra, pero quiere asegurar que le quede un heredero en la tierra. God is going to destroy the earth, but he wants to make sure he has an inherit and an here. Noé desestimó la herencia material. Noah did not give value to the material inheritance. Pero sabe qué logró Noé? Salvó sus generaciones. But you know what Noah was able to do? He saved his generations. Y ahí viene el tercer ejemplo, Abraham. And that comes the third example, Abraham. Cuando Dios llama a Abraham, when God calls Abraham Le ordena salir de su tierra y de toda su familia. he gives the order to leave his people and his land es decir, abandona tu herencia humana, cultural y económica. it's to say abandon your, inher your family your inheritance anything you've Dice la had que salió sin saber a dónde iba. the Bible says that he left without knowing where he was going en el corazón de Abraham estaba adquirir una herencia en una nueva tierra. in the heart of Abraham there was uh, to find an inheritance in a new land Vete a la tierra que te mostraré. God said, go to the land, I'll show you. A partir de ahí la visión de Abraham fue tierra, tierra, herencia, herencia. From that moment on, Abraham's vision was land, land, a new inheritance. Pero en verdad, lo de la tierra no era sino un señuelo para hacer que un hombre pudiera salir de su propia tierra. But in reality, the land was only the bite that God was using to bring Abraham out of his own land. Vamos, Abraham, te tengo una tierra. Ven, 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 ven. Abraham, I have a new land for you. Come, come. Y cuando Abraham se va, and when Abraham left, Dios le sale con otro cuento más bravo. God told him another story even dice, better. Mi verdadero objetivo contigo no es una herencia, sino darte un heredero. He said, my true objective with you is not to give you an inheritance, is to give you a care. But God said, uh, Abraham said, I'm too old to have children. Even my woman is too old. Y Dios dice, Un te voy a sacar. And God said, one hair, hair I'm going to extract from you. Dios a darle su herencia, él está feliz. When God starts giving him his inheritance, he's happy. Pero no llega el heredero. But the, the, the hair doesn't come. Entonces, su esposa le dice, Ten un hijo con la sirvienta para que tengas tu heredero. So the wife says, Have a child with my servant so you can have that firstborn you want. Y, y Dios le dice a Abraham, eh, No se trata de tener un heredero. And God said to Abraham, It's not about having a hair. Se trata de tener un heredero al estilo mío. It's having one in my style, how I need it. No porque sean hijos tuyos tienen mi gracia, es porque sean hijos de mi bendición sobre ti. It's not because they're your children that have my grace. It's because they have, they come from me. That is a blessing to you. Una gloria mayor se manifiesta. A greater glory is manifested. Sobre hombres y mujeres que amen más la gloria de Dios que sus raíces humanas. Over men and women that love more the glory of God than their own human roots. Esa gloria se manifiesta sobre gente que ame más la gloria de Dios que su identidad y que sus lazos familiares. That glory is manifested over those that love more their identity than their family ties or that they love more the glory of God than their family ties and their identity. Dios tenía a su hombre, Abraham. God had his man, Abraham. Tenía en la tierra determinada. He had him in the land that was determined. Lo hizo próspero. He made him prosperous. Pero Dios dice, Necesito un heredero. But God said, I'm looking after a hair. Because this old man is going to die eventually. This old man, in any moment, he will leave this land. Over him, over who is gonna, my plan is gonna stand. That's why God gives him the promise of his son, and he fulfills that promise. While well, Abraham's mind was focused on the land. El interés de Dios se enfocaba en un heredero. God's interest was focused on an inher on, on an heir. El heredero fue Isaac. And that heir was Isaac. Si usted mira la vida de Isaac, Isaac no hizo nada importante. If you look at the life of Isaac, Isaac didn't do anything important in his Busque, life. ¿Qué cosa importante hizo Isaac? Nada. Look for it. What important thing did he do? Nothing. Salvo obedecer a su papá y seguir los caminos que el papá le trazó hasta decirle con quién se iba a casar. De resto no hizo nada. Except for obeying his dad and doing exactly as his dad said, he didn't do anything. ¿Y por qué Dios trae tan buen concepto a Isaac? 
and why God uses Isaac or has why did he fight so much to, to bring a, um, a boy that in the end didn't do anything he didn't do anything for an inheritance but that boy was carrying within himself the genes of the here yo me imagino que si, si, si yo pongo a Dios a hablar con Abraham sobre Isaac if God, if I put a God to speak to Abraham yo creo que Abraham le diría pero es que este muchacho ahí en la casa no hace nada yo no le veo que sirve para nada I think Abraham would say this boy is at home all the time I don't see he's good for nothing el hijo de la sirviente es trabajador en cambio este es el hijo de papi mami todo el día ahí the, the, the son of that servant uh, he, he works hard but this one doesn't do anything y Dios me imagino que le dijo a Abraham and God I imagine saying to Abraham que la la a make sure the seed is transpassing to others from that seed called Isaac he gave birth Jacob and he was the, the inheritance the one that gave birth to the nation I don't know what is the result of your pass on this earth si no logras hacer nada grande en la para una herencia. But if but if you don't manage to do anything great on earth for an inheritance, asegúrate de guardar la semilla del heredero y pasársela a alguien. Make sure you keep that seed of the the here safe and pass it along to Entrégale someone. Entrégale a tus hijos un legado espiritual con el cual ellos puedan seguir caminando. Give to your children a legacy, a spiritual legacy that they can use, that they can be useful. Y el último ejemplo que les pongo. And the last example I'll give you cruel. is the more cruel Salmon. of them all, Salmon. Si hay alguien que tuvo herencia en la tierra es Salomón. If there is someone that received an inheritance on earth was him. Salomón no era un rico. Salmon was not rich. Era multimillonario. He was multimillionaire. Tan multimillonario que no solo tenía cantidad de dinero y riquezas. Mo so rich that he didn't only have riches sino que los reyes del mundo se inclinaban hasta él los reyes the kings of the world will bow down to him tenía 300 concubinas que eran 300 hijas de reyes que se las regalaban para hacer la paz con él he had 300 girlfriends basically which were given by the kings so they will establish peace between the kingdoms ¿Ha pensado en eso? Have you thought of that? ¿Qué haría usted si los 300 presidentes del mundo más grandes cada uno le mandan a regalar una hija a ver si usted le regala un nietecito? Imagine that the most important presidents of the world will send you one of their firstborn to see if you would give them an inheritance, uh, like you will extend the, the hair. Usted se imagina a Putin diciendo, es que yo le saco la cría a Giovanni. Would you imagine the president of Russia saying, I, I just want a baby from Giovanni? Trump, Trump diciendo, es que yo estoy que le saco la pinta a Alexander. Trump saying, I just need to have a descendant from Alexander. Mira el nivel de influencia que tenía Salomón. Look at the level of influence Todos that Salomón had. 300 en el mundo estaban esperando a ver si ese tipo les daba la semillita. All the kings, 300 of them was, were waiting to get a seed from that man. Eran 300 concubinas. Era que él tenía que tenerla porque en el oriente las mujeres usted no las podía desechar. There were 300 of them in, in, in the, the, east, the Middle East. You could not just throw out a woman. Or... Would you imagine the nights of being cold for the poor Salmon? He would look for that part of the palace and say, 300, I can choose from them. ¿Les pinto la idea cómo sería Salomón en una noche esa de complicada de tentación? Would you want me to show no, dígame, to sí, tell you? Duro lo que le voy a enseñar, pero le va a quedar para siempre. ¿Se lo enseño? Do you want me to tell you what was like a night for Solomon, uh, one of those nights of the sires? Se los cuento, no. Do you want to know or not? La idea sería más o menos así. This would be like it would it would have been like. Solomon se sentó en su computador Mac. Solomon was sitting down in his Mac. Le he, salió un pop up. And then there was a pop-up of pornography. And he said, I, I rebuke you, Satan. And he turned off uh, the Mac. But he had the idea in his mind, this is a cold night and I'm alone. Dijo, 
voy a orar como mi padre al pie de la puerta del de la ventana del palacio. He said I'm going to pray like my father at the door of the palace. Papá miró y vio a a Belsabel, no, él estaba mirando donde vivían las 300 concubinas. He was looking towards where the 300 girlfriends were. Dijo, "Señor, 300 y son mías." He said, "Lord, 300 and they're all mine." Eh, yo me escojo una hoy. I'm going to choose one hoy of them fue, today. Today was the day. Pero él dijo, Antes de ir a escogerla, voy a ir al baño. But he said, before I choose one of them, I'm going to go to the washroom. Voy a ir al pipi room, como digo yo en I'm going to go to the washroom. Voy a orinar. I'm going to pee. Y un hombre para orinar tiene que... And you know how it is for a man to pee in the washroom. Cuando él vio lo que tenía en la mano, When he saw what he had in his hand, vio que él estaba circuncidado. He realized that he was circumcised. Que él tenía un pacto de hecho con Dios. That he had a covenant that he did with God. And he said, oh my God, if I, if I put that in the wrong place, I will kill the plan, God's plan. He pulled up his pants and he went and drank water with a lot of ice. Pastor, no sea tan cruel. Pastor why are you so cruel? No sea tan gráfico. Don't be so graphic, Pastor. That's for you to learn. That's why God put the, the covenant there. So they knew that in that little organ, there was the way how he would transmit his inheritance. You can, you can have many that are being offered to you but you need to be careful where, where you put your seat while the red how I became so red just please say ay 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 that man Salomon Escribe en Eclesiastes 2, 18 al 21. He wrote in Ecclesiastes 2, 18 to 21. Sabe que esto fue escrito por él en los últimos años. This was written by him in the later years, in his later escuche, escuche, years. Escuche lo que el Espíritu se va a decir. Listen to what the Spirit is going to tell you. Asimismo aborrecí todo mi trabajo que había hecho debajo del sol. El cual, escuche, tendré que dejar a otro que vendrá después de mí. Y quién sabe si será sabio o necio el que se enseñoreará de todo mi trabajo en que yo me afané y en que me ocupé debajo del sol mi sabiduría. Esto también es vanidad. Wow. El tipo está lleno de dinero. The man it was full of anger. Lo ha hecho todo. He has done it all. Y ahora piensa y dice. And then he thinks and says to himself. ¿Qué how sad it is Tengo una herencia grande, más grande que la de cualquier hombre en el mundo. I have a great inheritance greater than anyone in the world Pero ahora tengo un problema. but now I have a problem ¿Quién se va a con todo lo que yo who is going to keep that which I work so hard to obtain all the gray hair all the big belly I have all the, the hardships I went through who's going to keep it would it, would it be wise or fool the one that will keep that which I work so hard for él no solo concluyó que todos los esfuerzos por una herencia son vanidad. Solomon did not only conclude that all the efforts for an inheritance is vanity. Sino que se dio cuenta de lo peor. He realized the worst. Él no había preparado a alguien para manejar todo lo que él había conseguido. He did not prepare someone to keep that which he worked so hard to find. Versículo 20. Verse 20. Al 21 dice así. 22 to 21st. Volvió por tanto a desesperarse. Perdón, desesperanzar, siga conmigo, desesperanzarse. Say with me, he was without hope. ¿Qué significa desesperanzarse? What does that mean? No tengo esperanza. He didn't have hope. Volvió a desesperanzarse en mi corazón acerca de todo el trabajo en que me afané y en que había ocupado debajo del sol mi sabiduría. Y escuche lo que el tipo dice, me lo imagino así pensando y escuche lo que dice. I would imagine someone thinking about this so deeply. Que el hombre trabaje con sabiduría y conciencia y con rectitud y que haya de dar su hacienda a hombre que nunca trabajó en ello. 
también es, esto es vanidad y mal carácter. ¿Usted sabe quién fue el sucesor de Salomón? You know who was the successor of Salomón? Su hijo se llamaba Roboam. His son, his name was Roboam. Un muchacho criado en palacio. A boy that was raised in a palace. Cuando salió el PlayStation 4, Roboam tenía el 8 ya. When PlayStation 4 came out, he had number 8. El muchacho que el iPad Air 2, no, yo ya voy por el 5. He was already in the 5 iPad Air when everyone else was had only the second. He had it all. Cuando se murió Salomón. When Salomon died. Muchacho quedó como rey de todo el país. The boy was the king of the whole country, the whole ¿Sabe kingdom. ¿Sabes qué dice la Biblia? You know what the Bible says? Que vinieron los de las otras tribus. That the other peoples from the other tribes came. Y le dijeron, ayúdenos que su papá nunca nos puso acueducto sino en Judá y en Jerusalén y nosotros no tenemos nada. He told them, he told him, help us because we don't have the water supply that we need. Ayúdenos, mijo, a ver si nos puede dar unos recursos para nuestra provincia. Help us so you can give us some resources to build up our provinces. El muchacho fue y le preguntó a los consejeros del papá. The boy went and asked the wise men that used to advise the father. Y estos ancianos le dijeron, mijo, vea, si usted les llega a dar dinero a ellos, los va a tener siempre en la mano. Hágalo y ayúdeles y ellos lo van a respaldar. And he, the, the, wise people, the wise man told him, if you help them, they will always back you up. Él era el heredero ahora. He was the heir now. Y dijo, bueno, eso dicen ustedes, ahora voy a hablar con mis amigos. He said, okay, that's what you say, now I'm going to talk to my friends. Le dijo a los muchachos por el chat, vénganse rápido que tengo que preguntarle una cosa. And he texts his friends and said, come quickly, I need to ask you something important. Los invito a unas frías. I'm going to invite you to have some cold beers. Y reunido con los amigos, les dijo, mira que vinieron de las otras provincias a decirme que les doy dinero. And, qué opinan? and sitting down with them, he asked them, the other people from the other provinces are asking me to help them. What do you think I should do? Y los amigos le dijeron, Métale duro para que aprenda a respetarlo desde ahora. No les des nada, antes quítale más. And his friends told them, hit them hard. Don't give them anything so they know who you are from now on. Y el hijo del hombre más sabio del mundo que ha pasado por la tierra, dice la Biblia. And the son of the wisest man that has ever existed on earth. Era un necio y un burro. He was a fool and he was comparable to a donkey. Hizo lo que los amigos le dijeron. And he did what his friends told him to do. Dijo, no solo no les voy a dar, sino que se me quitan de aquí que lo voy a abrochar más para que paguen impuestos. Not only I'm not going to give you anything. Get out of my sight because I'm going to even charge you more ¿Sabe taxes. Cuál fue el resultado? Do you know what the result of se this was? The kingdom was divided. Reino del norte, reino del sur, quedó dividido hasta hoy, se dividió para siempre. The kingdom of the north and the kingdom of the south and even to today is still divided. Lo peor que nos puede pasar. The worst that can happen to us es no tener un heredero. Is not to have a heir. Porque al no tener un heredero, todo lo que consigamos lo vamos a echar en saco roto. Because if we don't have that heir, everything we've worked so hard for is going to be put todo in a in a broken Dios sack. Todo lo que Dios consiguió y libró de Saúl. Everything that God helped Saul. Todo lo que Dios le entregó a David y David lo multiplicó. Everything that God gave David and he multiplied it. David era el abuelo del muchacho. David was the grandfather of Roboham. Todo lo que su papá Salomón logró ensanchar y hacer crecer. Everything that his father Solomon was able to to make bigger and, un and muchacho, done. Un muchacho necio y tonto lo acabó en un instante. A boy that was fool and was dumb finished it in a, in a moment. Lo peor que nos puede pasar Maranata es construir una herencia y no tener un heredero. The worst that can happen to us is to build an inheritance and not have a heir. Qué triste gastar todas nuestras fuerzas para hacer una herencia. How sad it would be to spend all our efforts to make an inheritance. Que al final quede en manos de unos ineptos. That in the end will be in the hands of fool people. Lo peor de esos ineptos es que llevarán nuestro apellido. And the worst of these fool people is that they will have our last name. Y harán estupideces en nombre nuestro. And they will do dumb things in our name. ¿Cómo podemos clamar por una eh, gloria mayor para esta nación? How could we cry out for a greater glory for this nation? Estableciendo herederos bajo el principio de Dios que sigan lo que Dios quiere hacer. Establishing a here that will do 
God's will and we'll, we will establish in them God's principles. El mejor regalo que le podemos dar a nuestra tierra. The best gift we can give to our land. Es preparar nuestros niños para que carguen ellos desde ahora una gloria mayor. Is prepare kids so from now on they start carrying a greater glory. Enseñarlos a una gloria de tal forma que no los asuste mañana. Teach them a glory in such a way that they will not be scared of later on. Necesitamos levantar una generación que no se asuste por el dinero, por la posición social o por la autoridad que tenga. We need to raise a generation that they will not be amused by the money or the social um, level that they can reach. El mejor regalo que le podemos dar a Canadá. The best gift we can give to Canada. Es convertirnos en una generación que tiene una gloria mayor a la que nos conoce. Is to become in a generation that has a greater glory than what everyone, anyone could have known of us. Is that you could see those that have children. Who has children here? Mires tus hijos y diga, that you could see your children and say, de son los hijos. An inheritance from God are my children. This is the inheritance I will leave for God when I die. There was a friend of mine that gave the, his inheritance was a, a pot. Imagine if we say that to God, God, here is my, my inheritance. You didn't leave me an inheritance, you leave me a bunch of problems. You couldn't handle your own kids and now you're going to give them to me? Asegurémonos de entregarle a nuestro a Dios nuestros hijos como una herencia lista para que sean potencializados. Let's make sure we leave our kids to God as an inheritance that is ready for Him to potentialize them into what He requires. Para los muchachos que no se han casado. For the youth that have not married yet. Por cierto. Uh, just so you know. Este sábado me invitaron a predicar los jóvenes a mí. On Saturday I was invited to preach. Dios me dio una palabra. And God gave me a word. Te voy a decir el título. I'm going to give you the title. El perfil de un compañero para toda la vida. The profile of a partner for the whole life. Venga y traiga a sus hijos. Come here and bring your children. Necesitamos saber cómo es la persona confiable para casar. We need to know how would be the person that is trustworthy to give my life para to. Para los muchachos que no se han casado. For those that have not married yet. Piense muy bien dónde va a poner la semilla. Think carefully where your seed is going to be laid on. Porque de eso determinará si tu gloria se estanca o si crece. Because that will determine either if your glory is stop or it would grow. ¿Cuánto desean hoy decirle, Señor? How many of you? How many of you want to tell God, God, I want a greater glory in my city. Quiero dar una gloria mayor. And I want to give a greater glory. Esta semana le decía a Papá Nahum. This week I told uh, my father Nahum. Le dije, yo voy lento, pero voy seguro. I told him I'm going slow, but I'm going firm. Le dije, yo estoy preparándote una generación. I am preparing. I am preparing a generation that you can use. No tengo afán de números. I'm not rushing for numbers. Tengo afán de propósito. I am rushing for purpose. Y lo, y lo que estamos levantando es para cambiar esta ciudad y esta nación. And what we're raising here will be enough to change a city and a country. Y tengo claro que muchas de las cosas no las voy a alcanzar a ver yo. And I have clear that many of what I've dreamed of I will not be able to see. Pero la vamos a ver con tus hijos y los but we will see them through your children and their children how many of you want to raise that greater glory for our city please stand up start to pray start to tell God I need to know that greater glory Lord a greater glory that no me quepa a mí that will not fit in, in me que no quepa en mi propia vida. that will not fit even in my own life Una gloria que necesite depósitos auxiliares. a glory that requires additional deposits Los depósitos que son mis hijos. those deposits that are my children Una gloria que yo no la pueda cargar por mí mismo. a glory that I'm not able to carry on on my own Sino que pueda entregarla but that a I mi can en la give it to my seed on, on this land Levanta tu mano al Señor. 
please raise your hand to the Lord. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. I declare your blessing over this time that you've given us of our fasting. For the seven days of crying out to you, Lord. Being one with the purpose of our spiritual father. Por tener una gloria mayor. For having a greater glory. Padre, yo te pido que este ayuno traiga cambios trascendentales a nuestra vida. Father, I ask you that this fasting will bring changes, dramatical changes in our lives. Traiga cambios trascendentales a nuestra familia. Bring transcendental changes in our families. Traiga cambios trascendentales a Maranatha, Toronto. We bring transcendental changes to Maranatha, Toronto. Traiga cambios trascendentales a nuestra ciudad y a nuestra nación. That we bring transcendental changes to our city and our nation. Padre, trabajaremos. Father, we will work. Por una herencia en los cielos. For an inheritance in in heaven. Y lo único que podremos llevar al cielo. But the only thing that we will be able to bring to heaven. Será la gente que salvemos. Will be the people that we save. Levanta mi familia, padre. Please lift up my family. Tell, Dice, tell God, hizo, levanta mi familia. lift up my family. Permíteme darte una herencia. Allow me to give you an inheritance que sean mis herederos. that would be my heirs, Portadores de una gloria mayor. that will be carrying en a greater glory. In the name of amén. Jesus, amen. Amen. Fuerte ese aplauso amen. al Señor, los amo. Los Strong.